Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's Estadia and Cloud Endure webinar featuring Migrate Your Workloads with Near Zero Cutover Downtime. During this presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to type it into your chat box on your control panel, and we'll save it for the end of the presentation. We have a great presentation in store for you today, so let's get started. Steve, I'll hand it over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Desiree. Um, so for starters, uh, my name is Steve Lack. I'm Vice President at Cloud Solutions here at Estadia. And we are really happy to have uh, Gonen Stein, uh, Vice President of Business Development at Cloud Endure with us today. Um, we're going to start with a little introduction to Estadia for those folks who, who don't know us. Uh, and then really jump into uh, what it takes to, to migrate these workloads to the cloud and, and what you need to accomplish during the assessment phase, um, what the migration methodology uh, should look like, um, some of the concerns um, that our customers have uh, about migrating these workloads, um, how they are alleviated and, and really taken by surprise by, by the uh, tremendous capability of the cloud into our platform. Uh, and then at the end, uh, we have a, an excellent uh, special offer for folks here on the webinar. And uh, certainly, uh, we'll leave plenty of time for uh, Q&A at the end. So with that, I'm going to get started and uh, talk a little bit about um, Estadia. Um, for those that uh, don't know us, um, Estadia is a full-service uh, technology consulting firm. Uh, helping our clients maximize the impact and minimize the risk in today's blended enterprise and cloud ecosystem. And we call it that as, as we don't believe that every application uh, and workload can or, or should be moved to the cloud. And there will certainly uh, still be on-premise requirements. Um, we offer a full suite of services from cloud assessments to migrations, uh, even for legacy workloads on mainframes. Uh, to DevOps, to a full suite of managed services from uh, desktop uh, to the data center to cloud. Um, we've been doing this uh, for a long time. Uh, our clients choose us um, for our experience, agility, and results. Um, we've been performing platform change for over 25 years. Uh, we do pride ourselves on being agile and flexible uh, and be able to work with you the way your organization likes to do things. Uh, most importantly, we deliver results. Our goal is for every one of our clients to be a reference for us and um, like to keep that being the case. So as you can see, uh, we do offer a full suite of services to help you migrate, secure, manage, and optimize the workloads that you are moving to the cloud, as well as those that are going to stay in your data center. Um, we provide, as I mentioned, end-to-end -end support for your end users from our 24 by 7 service desk uh, to be able to service them from their mobile device to their desktops to their applications. But obviously today, as you can see by the highlighted piece, we're uh, focusing on our cloud migration solutions. As you're going through the cloud journey, um, it's really critical that your assessment and planning phases are done thoroughly and correctly to make sure that your migrations go as smoothly as possible. Um, it's during this assessment phase that most of your key questions about moving your workloads are going to be answered. Um, uh, about a month ago, um, we did a webinar with our friends at Cloudomize uh, to answer some of these questions, um, get your environment prepared for Cloud Endure. Uh, hopefully, uh, many of you had attended that webinar. If not, um, you can access it uh, on our website. Um, it's still available up there. So some of the questions that need to be answered um, and challenges in your cloud journey, you know, everybody's got the same questions. Uh, which cloud is right for me? Uh, and how much is it going to cost me at the end? Um, what applications should I move? And what order should I move them? Critical. Right. Um, even I don't even know what applications I have out there uh, and how they're connected to each other. So how can you help me figure that out? And, and certainly, and most importantly, which cloud configuration um, is the best um, for us? So um, uh, our assessment platform um, will provide you with the data you need to plan your migration uh, to the cloud. Um, powerful analytics. Um, platform looks at the resources utilized by your existing workloads and will identify your best fit cloud vendor and give you visibility into the actual cost on running that workload on, on AWS, Azure, or 
school. Um, we can give you the data that you need to actually help you build um, your TCO for management, um, which is uh, obviously um, critical in order to get any kind of um, go ahead to be able to move those workloads. Um, the platform does a, a, a great job of uh, infrastructure and application discovery, um, even to the point where you're able to identify shadow IT um, that you might not be aware of, that uh, you know somebody just decided to, to spin up a server in Amazon and connect it to your infrastructure without telling anybody about it, um, we can find them out. <laughs> um, platform's also um, going to provide you with an application dependency map. Uh, also really critical and, and what this allows you to do is have a clear understanding of the interactions between your applications and make sure that you're building your move groups properly um, so that all dependent applications are moved together. Um, this information is required to help you really address the following challenges as you prepare for migration. Um, and I'm sure these are things that you've all heard. Um, how can I migrate my workloads with minimal downtime and disruption to my organization? Uh, I, I don't think I've heard many customers say, ah, oh, sure, I could be down for a week, won't affect me at all. Um, certainly every organization and every workload um, has its uh, criticality of time uh, that, that they uh, can possibly be down. We need to be able to address and answer those questions. Certainly you have uh, somebody jumping up and down saying our organization cannot tolerate any downtime. I can't be down for a minute. Um, how can I be sure that it's going to work once it's there? Um, how can uh, we test it and retest it and make sure that when we do that cutover that everything's working as it should? Um, how can you help me generate those kind of test plans? And then something that uh, we've seen a lot in the industry lately called the boomerang effect uh, is that once it gets over there and I'm not getting the TCO that I thought I was going to or for some other reason I need to move it back, uh, how can you help me do that? Well, so as you enter this migrate phase, um, you'll be able to see the value that Cloud Endor uh, brings to the table to be able to help you move your workloads to the cloud seamlessly with near zero downtime, no data loss, and uh, often uh, completely invisibly to your users. Um, they might not even know uh, that things have switched. So uh, with this, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Gonen um, uh, to give you an overview and a demonstration of the um, Cloud Endor platform. Excellent. Thank you so much, Steve. So hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today. Uh, let me quickly introduce myself. So uh, Steve was kind enough to uh, introduced me uh, earlier, uh, just to recap my role. So uh, as a VP of Business Development at Cloud Endure, I'm responsible for managing our strategic alliance partnerships with our cloud provider partners, and we work with many of them, like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, as well as our consulting and services partners, uh, and Astadia being one of our leading partners. So that's what I, I do for the company, and what we'll do today is talk about uh, who we are, uh, Cloud Endure, in case you, uh, you haven't heard about what we do as a company, uh, so who we are, what we do, and then I'll jump right into the technology, uh, the, the value proposition, how we can help you migrate workloads quickly, easily, and then I'll uh, spend some time showing you the product in action. And at the end, we'll have uh, time for a Q&A. Obviously, if anyone has any questions during the session, you can uh, put those, uh, post those in the chat uh, box, and we will address them at the end of the session. So with that, let's jump into uh, right into who we are. So Cloud Endure is a technology company, uh, an independent software vendor that focuses on enterprise workload mobility, as you can see here at the bottom. And uh, specifically, there is a key word here, which is live, right? Enterprise live workload mobility. And what this means is that we can help our customers or partners on behalf of customers take live running application workloads from any source infrastructure. It could be physical uh, data centers, virtual data centers, cloud-based infrastructure if you're looking to move from one cloud to another and replicate them without disruption and spin them up without disruption in the target location of your choice. So really any to any workload mobility. That's what we do. The company was founded back in 2012. We have offices in different regions across North America as well as our global headquarters in R&D based out of Tel Aviv. And from an investment standpoint, uh, we're working both with uh, venture capitals as well as strategic partners that have uh, invested in Cloud Endure and are also using Cloud Endure, uh, such as global integrators uh, all over the world. 
And some of the accolades we've received from analysts in the ecosystem include a uh, cool vendor from 2016 from Gartner in the uh, disaster recovery space, other awards in the migration space, because those are two primary use cases that we focus on. And the way that we uh, work with customers is uh, we, we, we help them address uh, two primary concerns, replicating and migrating workloads to the cloud or protecting workloads to the cloud for uh, cost reduction, dramatic cost reduction. We'll talk about that in a little more detail in a moment. Uh, we have customers across many different verticals. We haven't seen a specific sweet spot because really any entity that has a need to mobilize their workloads to the cloud uh, can benefit from Cloud Endure. So media and entertainment, financial, manufacturing, higher ed, and so on and so forth. From a cloud provider's standpoint, we support the, uh, the primary ones natively. So uh, Amazon, Microsoft, Azure, Google Cloud Platform. Uh, recently, as, as recent of last week, we've also added support for Oracle Cloud. So we should update our slide deck. And then from a technology uh, a partnership standpoint, we have uh, uh, different technology partners that can fill additional gaps uh, throughout the journey, such as Cloudomize that was mentioned before. So the assessment stage, which we are not involved in, can be done very effectively by partners like Cloudomize and the information that they gather during the assessment stage can be uh, in, uh, entered or imported into Cloud Endure to resume the migration process. So with that, let's uh, talk about how Cloud Endure is being positioned uh, by the cloud providers themselves. So uh, Amazon, if you look at uh, one of their slide decks that positions migration technologies in their ecosystem, positions Cloud Endure as a technology that is designated for mass migrations of production environments that require live migration of live running applications without disrupting them and with minimum downtime during cutover, which is really what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, if, as a customer, you're okay with having uh, longer downtime during your migration and longer disruption during your migration project, there are different ways to do it. You can move things manually. You can refactor the applications. But if you're really looking to move a massive amount of workloads with minimal downtime and, uh, and ensure that there is no need to shut down the applications during the, uh, during the migration project, Cloud Endure is the appropriate tool to do that. And it's also being leveraged by the Amazon professional services team themselves. In terms of what customers are saying, so anyone here can also access the Amazon Marketplace, take a look at the migration product, the Cloud Endure migration product on the Amazon Marketplace and see what customers are saying. Uh, so it's, it's, it's being pretty well reviewed uh, as a really easy tool, simple to use, minimal downtime, no performance impact or disruption. These are the, the key value propositions that our customers uh, realize when they use Cloud Endure. From a Google Cloud Platform perspective, there is also another very special partnership that we have with them. Uh, Google, uh, as everyone knows, is getting very uh, heavily into the whole cloud infrastructure space. They have uh, key customers, and they're looking to accelerate adoption as fast as they can. Uh, they've validated different types of technologies in the ecosystem that can help accelerate that cloud adoption. And they decided to not only work with Cloud Endure as their go-to tool, but also in, uh, uh, embed it, integrate it right into their Cloud Console. So any customer or partner that accesses the Google Cloud, uh, Cloud Console today will see under Compute Engine a button that's called Import VM, as you can see here. And that's basically Cloud Endure behind the scenes that allows uh, no-cost migration, so no-cost usage of our licenses in order to migrate the uh, workloads from any infrastructure, whether it's on-premise or other cloud providers, like AWS or Azure, right into GCP. So that's uh, the positioning from a Google perspective. And with that, let's jump into the technology itself. So I've mentioned the whole premise of, of uh, live workload mobility before, which uh, provides the, the option of taking these live workloads and uh, move them from point A to point B. The way that our customers envision Cloud Endure when they start using it and what they, what they tell us that they feel like is almost like the ability to teleport a system from point A to point B. And that's really what the experience is like, because you have a workload that's running here without any, any disruption, and you have the ability to spin it up in the target location of your choice with minimal disruption. The primary use cases for Cloud Endure uh, are typically around uh, business continuity, disaster recovery, as well as migration. So you know, from a DR perspective and 
Today we're going to be primarily focusing on the migration side of, of the house, but uh, many customers we do see starting from protecting their workloads into the cloud, reducing their costs by doing so dramatically, and then when they're ready to go, they can lever leverage the same technology to migrate into the cloud. So when you set up protection into the cloud, you really simplify your future migration. Uh, if you are ready to move uh, right now, then that's fine as well. You can start to move the workload using Cloud Endure. And as we've uh, mentioned before, the primary uh, use case here in the value proposition is to mass migrate with near zero downtime. Because I mean, anyone can find a way to move a workload if you have all the time in the world and you can sustain downtime, you can build things from scratch. But if you have a business to run and you, you don't want to impact your business during your migration project, that's where we can come in and help uh, very seamlessly. From a technological perspective, let's dive a little deeper so that everyone understands how we can actually do what we say we do. Because when we speak with some clients, uh, this, this used to happen back in, back in, the, uh, in our early days of Cloud Endure, people really didn't believe that this was doable. I mean, how can you literally take a live running system without disrupting it and move it in real time with any changes made also captured in real time, how can you take that into the cloud, uh, let alone uh, move the system, convert the systems, so what we do is uh, we have built our technology that relies on three primary pillars that are all Cloud Endure development, Cloud Endure IP. The first one is the replication component. Cloud Endure has developed its own continuous block level replication engine that runs at the OS level. Uh, this means that we don't need hypervisor access, we don't need storage, specific uh, direct storage access. And the agent gets installed on any Windows or Linux servers, x86 servers, and starts replicating the data at the block level. And what that means is that, first off, we become infrastructure agnostic. The, the reason that we uh, run at the OS level is, is so that we have the ability to replicate any server, physical servers, virtual servers on any hypervisor, cloud-based servers. It's all transparent to us. And since we replicated the block level, and we're not application aware, we don't need to be application aware, we can support any applications. We're completely agnostic to the applications. And very common ones that are being migrated with Cloud Endure include SQL servers and a bunch of SQL related applications like SharePoint or Exchange, Oracle workloads, SAP workloads, as well as any homegrown application. Those are all supported seamlessly using Cloud Endure. The agent itself is non-disruptive, so it doesn't require a reboot when it gets installed. It doesn't impact performance in any noticeable way, given how we replicate, that we sit in memory and replicate transactions that we capture in memory. And it's real-time sync, meaning that there is no concept with Cloud Endure of periodic snapshots that are being taken every now and then. It's all continuous replication, what's called CDP, continuous data protection. So the data sync is always in real-time up-to-date sync, and it puts you in a position to always be able to cut over that system into the cloud with minimal uh, downtime and no data loss, of course. So that's step number one of our technology. Step number two is a machine conversion because it's not enough to just replicate a server uh, block by block from one infrastructure to another. It's not going to magically boot. You can't take a VMware machine or a physical machine or a Hyper-V based machine, replicate it into Amazon or Azure or Google and expect it to magically boot. It's not going to happen because it needs to be changed to, to the appropriate target infrastructure of choice. And this is where we have the machine conversion engine that performs all the appropriate conversions and changes to the machine that are required for it to become native to the target cloud provider. So injecting hypervisor drivers, changing bootloaders, installing cloud tools, uh, changing networking uh, adapter uh, interfaces and, uh, and, and, and network configurations. All that is happening behind the scenes with Cloud Endure very quickly when the machine comes up. And within about 30 seconds, the machine is now native to the target infrastructure and it can be used. And this is uh, followed by an automated orchestration mechanism that does this at scale. Because it's one thing to replicate one machine and convert one machine and bring it up. It's a different thing to be able to do it in large waves. So when you migrate, you need to be able to do it in move groups that are uh, not uh, uh, just comprising one machine. It's going to com be comprising 10 or 20 or 50 machines. And if you're using it for disaster recovery, you may want to be able to spin up hundreds or thousands of machines at any given point, either for testing purposes or for real 
recovery purposes and Cloud Endora supports that as well. And we scale with the cloud provider. So as long as Amazon or Google or Azure will provide you with uh, the compute and storage resources that you need, we will uh, be able to do that as well. So uh, it's uh, uh, virtually infinitely scalable. So how does it work? Let's start from a high level. From a high level, you deploy the agent on the source machine after you've uh, gone through the assessment stage. So uh, based on what Steve mentioned before, uh, using Cloudomize uh, or other methodologies, you assess what you want to move, whether it belongs in the cloud and how it should be spun up in the cloud. Once you do that, you can install the agent on the source machine that begins the uh, data replication. No imp uh, reboot, no impact on performance or applications to configure. It's all transparent. And then uh, the, the data replication is, uh, is um, initiating and keeping in real time sync. Once that step is done, you can proceed to step two, which is configuring the target blueprint. Uh, in other words, defining within the Cloud Endure console where each machine belongs, what subnet to uh, spin up the machine in, when you're ready to migrate, what security groups or firewall rules to use, uh, instance types to use, and so on. And once you've configured that blueprint, you can go ahead and test. And the test is also non-disruptive. This is a key element of Cloud Endure. So there is no guesswork here of uh, closing your eyes and hoping for the best. You always have the ability with Cloud Endure to test that the migration is actually going to work. You know exactly how it's going to behave during the actual cutover. You can conduct it in an isolated, controlled fashion. And once you're ready to go, just flip the switch and redirect to the cloud. So if you've tested once, you're unhappy, no big deal. You can go back, make corrections to the blueprint, uh, change it to a different subnet, target subnet, change it to a different instance type, IP addresses that may need to change, and so on. But when you're ready to go, when you've tested it sufficiently and you know exactly how it's going to behave, just repeat that step one last time and redirect user traffic into the cloud. And that's going to be the uh, cutover stage of your migration. And this is how we can achieve near zero downtime, uh, talking about minutes, minutes of downtime during cutover. So no downtime during the actual migration project because there is no reboot required and no performance impact. And when you're ready to flip the switch, just set a specific time that you want to do it, like 2 p.m. on a Saturday, stop the end user traffic to the source applications, bring up the machines in the cloud, and redirect user traffic. That's how Cloud Endure works from a high level. So with that, let me go ahead and jump into a uh, real life demo of how this, uh, how this looks like. So give me one moment. Okay, so everyone should be able to see my Chrome browser. Uh, again, Steve, if you could just confirm that Chrome browser comes up on your side. Yep, we got you. Okay, great. Excellent. So Cloud Endure uh, migration, the way that it works is that you sign up for an account on our website. So uh, and anyone can uh, simply access cloudendure.com and request a free trial. Once you sign up for an account, the account can either be activated for migration purposes or for DR purposes, which behave very similarly. Uh, the primary difference between migration and DR is that migration is a one-way street. You can always go back if you want to by setting up another one-way street from the cloud back to on-premise. Cloud Endure supports that as well. Uh, but this is unlike a DR uh, implementation that typically needs to have the ability to fail over and fail back uh, periodically when you perform a test into the cloud and fail back into on-premise. So that's one difference between migration and DR. The other difference is that with DR, you can also recover to previous points uh, in time, previous points in the past as opposed to migration, which uh, really there is no value to recovering to previous points uh, in time. Uh, when people want to migrate to the cloud, they want to migrate to the latest point because there is no value in losing any data. You want to keep everything in, in real time uh, and up to date. Once you sign up for the account and, uh, and it's being activated, what you have the option to do is deploy agents on the source machines that you want to protect, that you want to uh, migrate or protect. So in this case, I have a couple of servers here, which are part of a two-tiered application. I've got a, a demo front-end server of a blog site. It's, it's a, in this example, it's a blog site that's running on WordPress. So there is a front-end web app, and there is a back-end database running on uh, MySQL. In the same sense, it can run on any other database, any other uh, front-end web application. It's all transparent to Cloud Endure. And in order to install uh, agents on additional machines and protect additional machines, there is uh, an icon here, this question mark, that uh, shows you how to add additional instances. So there is a, an agent installation token for each server that you want to deploy um, for authentication, and there is the link 
to uh, download and to uh, download and install both Linux-based uh, agents or Windows-based agents. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, installation is non-disruptive. Once you perform the agent install, the machine registers with our service and comes up, shows up on the list here. Now, in this case, as I mentioned, we have a two-tiered application. Let's access the application. This is a live running app. Let's access it and see what's going on. So this is a front-end app. If I click on that uh, front-end server, you'll see that there, is a, 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 there are two tabs here, source and blueprint. The source tab presents information about that source server. So I've got the public IP of that source server that I can uh, connect to just to uh, add uh, some data to that live running application. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go and access that IP address, access my WordPress site. You can see that this is a live running site that uh, can equate to a, an application that you have running in your on-premise data center just before you migrate it. And you can create another post. So let's create a post here that's called uh, Astadia Migration to AWS. And the time right now is uh, 2.28 p.m. Eastern time. When I publish that, this is uh, simulating a live uh, transaction that's taking place in a production application. Uh, what's happening behind the scenes is that this front-end server passes the transaction to the back-end server. Data gets written to disk. And as soon as that data is written to the disk, whether it's metadata or the actual transactional data, it's immediately captured by Cloud Endure, by the agents running on those two machines, on the front-end and back-end servers. And that data is replicated securely and immediately to the target location of your choice. So in this case, if I go back to the site, you'll see that the transaction is posted, and here it is. And if I go back to the Cloud Endure dashboard, you'll see that this server, this front-end server, is showing a status of continuous data protection. And same thing applies to the other one. So both machines are showing continuous data protection. Both are replicated in real time. And Cloud Endure also presents under this uh, column here if there is a lag. So if there is a network disconnection or network saturation because of a lot of data that tries to get ridden at the time of the cutover, Cloud Endure will present uh, whether there is a lag in replication or not. And this is something important to look at as you prepare for a migration cutover. You don't want to be lagging behind on the data replication because there is some network issue when you cut over, because then there's going to be some data left behind. That's the value of, of seeing this here. But if the network connection is stable, Cloud Endure will always be in a lag time of none, because we are replicating everything in real time, down to the second or sub-second. The next thing to do is define the blueprint, right? So earlier, we talked about the, the, the need to define a blueprint. And the blueprint is something that you can either define manually, so defining what instance types need to be used when the machine comes up in the cloud, what subnet to bring up the machine in, security groups to use, private IPs, public IPs, tagging, IAM roles. These are uh, terms that are related to Amazon. If you're using Cloud Endure to migrate into Azure or Google, you'll see the appropriate terms for those cloud providers. Uh, volume device types. So all those details can be defined here. And if, uh, if you want to automate things further, this is where the integration with tools like Cloudomize would kick in. Right, so Cloudomize can detect a lot of these items automatically as part of the assessment stage, and that information can then be imported programmatically into Cloud Endure, into the blueprint, so this manual process is not required. Once you've done that, once the blueprint is ready, whether manually or via automation with integration with Cloudomize, you can go back to the console and spin up the machines. So spinning up the machines is very, very simple. You check the checkbox next to the machines that you want to bring up, click Test continue, and bring up the machines, right? In a, in a migration scenario, there is only the option of bringing up the machine using its latest point in time. In a DR scenario, if you do want to recover for business continuity purposes, uh, you can recover to previous points. But for migration purposes, this is the only option you will see, latest. And when you click on continue, this kicks in the uh, other stages of the orchestration by Cloud Endure, right? So, so far, we talked about the ongoing protection or ongoing migration of the servers, the real-time replication of data. We've talked about the blueprint configuration process. And what's happening now behind the scenes, if I look at the log, you'll see what's happening behind the scenes, is Cloud Endure starts to bring everything up. So it takes the data that's been continuously replicated into the cloud. It uses that data to bring up the machine using its most up-to-date state down to the second. And it performs all the appropriate changes required to make that machine cloud compatible. So if it came from VMware or from physical hosts or from other cloud providers, Cloud Endure will basically 
handle the entire process of bringing it up, attaching the volumes, attaching the network interfaces, configuring the network interfaces, hypervisor driver changes, uh, OS reactivation. So if you're coming from an on-premise environment and you, your Windows licenses are activated using your own KMS server, Cloud Endure handles the reactivation of those Windows licenses against the cloud providers of choice. And all of that happens very quickly. So within uh, a couple of minutes, usually at the most, the process will be complete. You can see here behind the scenes that all the, all the appropriate steps that are happening, so launching the machines in the appropriate VPCs, attaching the appropriate internet gateways, routing tables, security groups, uh, creating the instances, attaching the volumes, and within a few minutes, everything will be up and running. And, and there we go, actually, it's done. So you see that we started the process at 2.31 and 34 seconds, 31.34, and we finished the process at 33.00. So about a minute and a half is the time it took us to create everything end-to-end. -end. And to Cloud Endure, it doesn't matter if we're spinning up one machine or two machines, as we've done here, or 50 or 100 or 1,000, because we leverage the cloud provider's APIs in parallel, bring everything up, and uh, it's really just a matter of waiting for the machines to boot at that point. So Cloud Endure has done doing its thing. It's, it's done uh, con uh, configuring the machines and making them cloud native within a matter of just under two minutes. And then if the machine will take another couple of minutes to boot, uh, you'll have to wait for the machine to come up, and uh, the process will be complete. And you can see an icon here that indicates that the uh, machine is already up. So for both machines, the icon indicates that the machine is already up. Uh, there is also another dashboard here that shows you if there are any issues that you should be aware of as you're planning your migration. So uh, if everything is ready to go, it means that replication is fine. You've tested the machines before the cutover, and everything is ready to go. If you see certain machines still going through their initial sync, that's a, that's a flag that you should uh, take into consideration, because if you haven't finished the initial sync, you may want to uh, postpone your migration cutover window until everything is done. If there are any machines requiring attention or replication stalled, you can see all that here as well. And that brings me to the final stage. So if I go back here to the console and access my new uh, my front end server, you'll see that in addition to the source tab that I had before and the, tar and the blueprint tab that I had before, there is another tab called target. And that target tab has the information of the target machine that just came up in the appropriate target region in the cloud of my choice. And if I access that, uh, WordPress site, which is now running in a completely different region in the cloud, assuming that the OS completed booting, which it did, you'll see that we didn't skip a beat. And this is really kind of the wow factor that uh, customers initially don't understand how, how is this possible. I mean, I had a machine that was running in my on-premise infrastructure right here, uh, or sorry, right here, which was uh, running on a different region, completely different cloud or on-premise data center using a different IP address. And now, within a matter of minutes, it's in the cloud using its most up-to-date state. And this is what the experience would look like when you're preparing for your migration cutover window. You prepare a very short uh, cutover window of minutes, bring up the machine in the cloud, and then redirect the user traffic or flip the switch. That's uh, what I wanted I'm, to go through. I'm giving you a standing ovation right now. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> You know, at first, I, I, even I didn't believe it, right, when I, when I saw this in action. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it does actually work, and, uh, and I guess that's the reason why it's being positioned the way it is with, uh, with the cloud providers themselves, because uh, you know, they, they like anything that accelerates the adoption of infrastructure, of cloud infrastructure, which this does. So with that, uh, thank you, Steve. Let me uh, hand controls back to you. Um, to Desiree. I'm oh, sorry, glad. Desiree, that's right. Yep. Steve, that, Desiree, back over to you. Thank you, Gonan. Sure. All right, so let's talk about the, a special offer we have just for you guys. Uh, we have 10 free Cloud Endure uh, licenses available for you guys. So let's talk about how. So for any enterprise migrating over 100 servers to the cloud with, with a state in Cloud Endure, the Cloud Endure will provide 10 disaster recovery licenses for six months at no charge. This is a phenomenal deal that's valued up to $7,000. And uh, it's limited to the first three webinar participants 
for DR subscriptions starting before the end of June. So you definitely want to act fast on this. This is an opportunity you do not want to miss out on. So again, um, special offer for um, up to, we'll provide 10 disaster recovery licenses for six months at no charge. So feel free to, if you want to act now on this offer before uh, you, you lose your chance, what you do is you go to info at astadia.com and just put um, cloud indoor DR license offer and we'll make sure that we get in contact with you right away. I think now it's, uh, let's talk about Q&A. We've been getting a lot of really wonderful questions coming through as Steve and Gonan were presenting. So let's kick it off. Uh, but just a quick reminder, if you do have a question to ask our experts, feel free to type it into your chat box on your screen. Um, and uh, let's start to ask, let's start to uh, go through some of the questions we've been receiving throughout the presentation. First question, how much data loss and downtime should I expect for during a migration cutover or DR failover? Steve, would you like to answer this question? I, I will answer that question, and um, obviously in, in seeing um, the live demo that uh, Gonan just did, um, you know, because of the uh, continuous replication uh, occurring in the background, uh, with obviously no performance disruption to what you're currently running, the actual cutover, I, I think we just saw it happen in a minute and a half, right, and can be planned in advance so that even that minute and a half uh, has no impact uh, on the business. It's it's really just simply a matter of, of spinning up the compute instance um, since uh, the data itself is already over there and then repointing DNS um, to the target. So uh, really zero data loss and um, uh, a few minutes at most of downtime is, is really anybody should expect. Um, going in, anything else you want to add to that? Uh, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. So in a, in a migration project, since you control when the migration cutover happens, the data loss is obviously zero. It's always going to be zero because you know when that cutover is expected to happen and the cutover window itself, as you mentioned, is uh, just a few minutes. Uh, from a DR perspective, I think that was, that was a question as well. I mean, in, in a DR scenario, you can't foresee when disaster is going to happen, unlike migration that you migration cutover that you do plan. So in a, in a DR scenario, the data loss would be measured in sub-seconds because it's continuously replicating data, but you may have some partial transaction that didn't make it through. So it's sub-second uh, RPO, recovery point objective, and recovery time objective, bringing up the machine, would be the same as in a migration scenario, just a couple of minutes. All right. Um, next question. What is the frequency of the replication? Steve, do you want to take this one? Um, yeah, I think a, a part of that was, was again, um, uh, something that we had talked about with the, the CDP, right, the continuous data protection uh, being uh, in memory and uh, not taking snapshots or, or writing data to disk. Um, there is really almost no impact at all on on RPO, as as Gonan just said. It's it's certainly you you cannot foresee disaster happening, uh, but because of the way that that Cloud Endor works and and the CDP, uh, perhaps there's a partial transaction um, that gets lost, but um, uh, nothing else. So so again, frequency of replication uh, replication is is not snapshot based, but consistent. Um, so it's uh, it's uh, always. Um, I don't know if you want to add to that as well. Go ahead. No, that's exactly right. Yeah, frequency would be always real time. Yep. All right, great. Next question: What happens to my replication if the network is interrupted during the data transfer? Donan, you want to take this one? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, you know, during a migration project or a protection, DR protection project or implementation, there is always the risk of uh, the network connection going down, either going down or network saturation issues, and Cloud Endure needs to know how to handle that. So the Cloud Endure agent that is responsible for replicating data when it's written to the disk also knows how to monitor for any changes that are happening on the source machine if the network connection is down. 
and then it knows how to catch up when the network connection is back up and running. So essentially any block transaction that is committed to the disk, uh, if everything is working all right, it'll be replicated in real time into the target location of choice. If the network connection is not available, then the agent will capture all those transactions that are written to the disk. It'll uh, understand and monitor the right order of data to the disk. And whenever the connection is back up and running, the Clarendor agent will simply read the data from the disk, the data, the data that was written during that network outage, catch up, and then everything is back to normal. All right, interesting. Um, that's actually really helpful and good to know because moments like that do happen. Um, next question, what will be the performance impact on my system if I have a write intensive database? Gonan, would you like this one? Sure, yeah, and this is a very common question with enterprises that are using, uh, for example, Oracle workloads or SAP workloads or SQL servers that, uh, that can become quite uh, intensive applications, very, very busy applications. And the concern that typically comes up, uh, as I'm sure this question probably comes from, is, uh, is, is it going to be impactful to my machine? I mean, my machine is, uh, is busy enough as it is. Is the replication going to impact it further? And with Flatender, there is a completely negligible uh, impact on performance because uh, goes back to the uh, to the concept of us not taking any snapshots. When you take snapshots, that's when performance uh, becomes impacted severely. But with Cloud Endora, since the replication is running in memory, so uh, all we do is we capture the transactions in memory, even for a very write intensive application. Memory is not going to be the bottleneck. We capture those transactions, compress encrypt in memory, and replicate over to the target location. So performance impact will be less than 1% uh, of uh, CPU utilization, uh, if that. And the memory utilization of Cloud Endure is going to be a fixed buffer of 100 megabytes. That's the only uh, uh, CPU and memory consumption on a machine, and performance impact would never be felt. All right. Next question. How many servers can Cloud Endure launch simultaneously in my target cloud location of choice? And I know, Gonan, you had uh, went over this briefly, but maybe you could, maybe, well, for, first let's have Steve address this on the how many servers, and then Gonan, maybe you can uh, chime in as well. Sure. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, as uh, I think Gona did address this during the during the end of the uh, uh, demo, but it, it, Cloud Endure is really designed for large scale migrations, and and uh, because of the way it works, uh, enables the replication of uh, thousands of machines simultaneously without any performance impact. Um, certainly, after the initial replication, um, you can spin up all your machines or or machine groups. Um, in parallel, as well as execute any you know post migration skip, uh, scripts that you might have, um, and uh, certainly you can you can even manage the entire uh, migration lifecycle and verify your readiness uh, directly from the Cloud Endor console, as you saw. So all that built-in automation and orchestration uh, just uh, allows tremendous um, scale uh, as you spin things up. Yep, and, and I guess just to add to that, uh, you know, we, we will basically bring up uh, the, the resources uh, as long as the cloud provider has those resources to provide. So, you know, if, if Amazon comes to a point or, or Google or Azure comes to a point where they don't have resources, we will obviously not be able to bring them up, but that's a very rare occasion that cloud providers don't have the resources. And even if that is the case, you know, there could be a situation of, uh, let's say, a regional disaster. And if you're using it for, I mean, if, if, if you're using it for migration, then no big deal. You'll just use another instance uh, if, if uh, the cloud provider ran out of certain instances. But in a DR scenario where you don't have that luxury of waiting, Cloud Endure also brings to the table another uh, really unique capability, which is uh, spinning up the next resources up the chain with your uh, advanced permission, of course. So if you do want to ensure that the resources will always be available to you, you can turn on this feature. And then if for some reason uh, Amazon runs out of, let's say, M3 large resources instances, Cloud Endure will just ask for the next resource up the chain in order to guarantee as minimal downtime as possible. Interesting. 
thousands of machines simultaneously without any performance impact is pretty incredible. Um, next question. What types of OS versions are supported? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, actually, and, and, and we, we do get that a lot. And, and certainly, um, uh, Windows, um, most versions of Linux. Um, and, and obviously, the reason for that is uh, what are supported on, on the cloud. Um, so with, uh, with um, you know, Azure and AWS really supporting uh, multiple versions of Linux uh, and Windows, um, that's what's supported here. You're not going to spin up a, you know, an AIX or a HPUX or some, uh, or a, you know, Solaris in the cloud. So um, maybe someday down the road, right, Gunan? Yeah, some, someday. But um, but until that point, you know, the the common x86 uh, operating systems would be supported. So Windows 2003 and above, uh, all the, the common distributions and versions of Linux, uh, including CentOS, Red Hat, Oracle Linux, Ubuntu, Debian, SUSE, all, all those common versions will be supported. And everything can also be, uh, if, if anyone has specific questions on that, uh, there is open access to docs.cloudindoor.com, so docs.cloudindoor.com, and that includes the uh, agent installation documents, which includes the always the most up-to-date information about the operating systems that we support. All right, good to know. Um, next question: How is my how is my data secure during transit? Gonan. Yep, I can take that. So, uh, in in two in two means. Uh, first of all, the data that gets replicated using Cloud Endure is always encrypted in transit using 256-bit AES encryption. So, as any block transaction gets committed to disk, it's captured in memory, as we've mentioned before. It's compressed and then encrypted in memory and sent asynchronously to the target location of choice. So that's the first level of security. It's the data in transit encryption, which can also be extended to data at rest encryption. When the, uh, the block arrives to the target location, we can maintain encryption on it. On top of that, we also replicate the data over private tunnels if the customer sees fit. So we, we are able to replicate the data over the public internet if desired, but most of our enterprises will uh, elect to replicate the data over private connections like VPN or Direct Connect or Express Route or the yeah, Google Interconnect service, and those are all supported natively by Cloud Endor. And talking about support, um, the next question that came in is: Is our Oracle and uh, SAP databases supported as well? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah. So any um, any common uh, uh, database. Would be supported, or or even just a homegrown application would be supported by Cloud Endure. All right, um, and I think this is a, the last and final question from the audience. Um, it says, "What are what are the network requirements needed for the solution to operate?" Gonan, would you like this one? Sure, absolutely. So uh, really, there, there is no specific network requirement for Cloud Endure. I mean, Cloud, Cloud Endure, since the replication is conducted asynchronously, uh, really doesn't have a hard requirement. But, uh, but there is also physics, right, the, the limitations of just physics. Uh, if data is being written to the source machines, which the network can never handle eventually, like you're writing data at a fast pace that the network can never catch up on, that's going to be something that will uh, force you to upgrade your network pipe or reduce the amount of data that you want to replicate across. Not because there's going to be any impact. Cloud Endure will not cause any impact on the source machines, but you may be in a position where it'll never catch up just because of physics, because the, the network pipe is not fast enough. So what you do want to plan for is ensure that the, your network pipe is, is uh, able, is capable of eventually replicating the data across. Even if there are certain spikes, that it cannot uh, handle in time, that's perfectly fine because Cloud Endure will catch up, but you need to ensure that over time, replication can uh, eventually catch up and get transferred over the wire. All right, great. Well, um, that was our last question, so this concludes today's webinar. We appreciate having both Steve and Gonan share their knowledge on cloud migration, so Thank you both for uh, joining and, and presenting your expertise in, in how to make this 
process a little bit more seamless for others. Um, and most importantly, we appreciate all of the registrants and all of you guys who joined us today to learn more about this topic. We look forward to joining uh, for you joining us next time, and and we'll see you next time.